But not far from where the Steelers' former homes at Three Rivers Stadium, Forbes Field once stood, we are at Pittsburgh's Accresure Stadium. Today, we've got a good one on tap in the AFC North as it'll be the Baltimore Ravens taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. The lane opens here. He's past the 30. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. The drive starts with a carry by Edwards. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. Someone's looking fresh, and his old line is definitely licking their chops. Everyone likes to run block if you're an offensive lineman. Nice early burst, nice gain, too. Second down and a little more than a yard here. First carry now for Justice Hill. And yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. Bad news, they didn't get it on second down. The good news is they still only need about three or four inches here on third. And the good play callers have looked at both situations. They thought to themselves, okay, this call, I pick up the first down, already ready with that call. If I don't, this is what I'm going to come back with in order to pick it up. And he will have a Ravens first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. I have to imagine many a defensive coordinators had a sleepless night trying to game plan ways to slow down Lamar Jackson. What do you think is the most effective way to try to do it? But you've got to be a little counterintuitive because normally you're sitting on the wide receiver one, aren't you? But with Lamar Jackson, I'd sit on the tight end. He loves to throw into the middle of the field, loves that position as his number one target. Take that away and hope you have a corner who can stand up man-to-man -man against a speed guy on the perimeter. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. To throw is Jackson. It's caught by Aguilar. It'll go as a gain of four. And just like that, it's third down. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. Throwing is Jackson. And that is incomplete. That is certainly one way to press go to quarterback. And there's extra defenders on the field. Dime package, lots of speed, no space to fit in the football. So on trots the field goal unit, and wow, this is going to be a challenge here. And he missed it. It's no good, and this will remain a scoreless game. That opening drive looked good for a moment there, but they'll wind up being turned away thanks to the missed field goal. And those especially hurt when you come into a game on the road. You're trying to get things to go your way early, and now you suffer a setback right out of the gate. First and ten, here's Pickett. A short one there to fire move. Only able to gain a couple there, and that'll bring up second down. And there's a completion to the tight end, and look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. Meanwhile, Pickett's throw pulled in by Robinson here. Pittsburgh getting 16 yards there and also a first down. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped, and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together, and he catches it and goes over the sideline. Pickett to throw on first down. That's down the field and caught by Fireman. Steelers are on the board first here this afternoon. For 
good reason quarterbacks want to get the ball to the perimeter to their wide receivers for big plays. But in this situation, it felt like, based on coverage, he knew that he wanted his tight end to have the football, and for good reason. Extra point put through by Boswell, and that makes the score 7-0. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. Duvernay going to sit on this in the end zone, so it'll come out to the 25. Baltimore set to take over here for their second possession of the game. Yeah, they were in field goal range the last time out, but couldn't connect. And it's early in the game, so I don't think that the confidence just goes entirely out of, you know, running your kicker back out there. But let's face it, some coaches have a little bit less patience for that than others. Let's see if they call the game differently now in terms of what they do on drives and not try and settle for field goals. Yeah, he tries to keep the legs churning, but he's going to be stopped behind the line. Two things to watch. First, his strength and being able to break out that initial contact. But at his size, once you slow his momentum, it's hard for him to get it started again and end up tackling him behind the line of scrimmage. Here's Edwards again on second down. And he'll be taken down here as it will take us to the end of the first quarter. So not a lineman, but the tight end instead this time drawing the holding call. And more and more what you're getting with tight ends are guys who are much more receiver than blocker. They may be willing, but that might not be their thing. Oftentimes, they'll be the ones getting the penalties. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Jackson now. And they're able to bring him down at the 20. So give him two yards there on the completion. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs. And they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. That is caught with Sean Bateman. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. There's another example where defensive coaches constantly preach not allowing any run after the catch. They gave up a few more yards than they wanted to, but they were able to get him down quickly and force a fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. Now Austin. It'll wind up being a net of 41. Nine-yard return, 50 on the punt. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. And a short pickup to about the 25. Oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Again, it's Harris on second down. And yeah, this will be a gain of five as he gets it to the 30. Call it a gain of five there on the run, but they'll remain a yard or two short here with third down coming up.
Third and two, Pickett. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And he will have the Steelers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I got a kick out of that one, partner. You and I talk often about trying to hide receivers in certain situations, but a guy of his size can't really hide him. But the tight end drag route, definitely an effective way to sneak him across the formation for an easy completion and a first down. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Certainly looked like someone was very confident in his ability to fit that one in. I would say he was overconfident because there wasn't a whole lot of separation there. Had that one covered pretty well downfield and knocked it away. Now a second and ten. Pick it. He'll look to throw it. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over at that time, but it's going to lead to third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. They'll throw again with Pickett. Under a heavy rush and down he goes. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Now on fourth down, Presley Harvin on to punt for the Steelers. Good open field tackling there, a 50-yard punt followed by just a one-yard return. And the Ravens, they'll take over. And Baltimore's offense set for this next possession. And Charles, we'll see what they can do here. Not a ton of time left, but enough certainly to get points out of this drive. And they need them right now because they're trailing. Yeah, this is exactly why you practice a two-minute drill all through camp and at least one practice each week before a game. A minute left, more than enough time to string a few completions together, reach the end zone, and then make that walk back to the locker room just a little more animated. So he'll be stopped here for no gain, and that'll make it second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to. And if you're in four down territory, that really opens things up for you. Jackson looking to throw on third. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half. And now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Here's Austin. So we've reached halftime with just the lone touchdown here. 7-0 is our score. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach! And it'll come out to the 25. Austin not going to try and return it. The Steeler offense here about ready for their next drive. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. And he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just so quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Second down, here's Pickett. Pass complete, George Pickens with it. And he's brought down, getting this one up to about the 35. He 
was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. This has to go down as one of the simpler routes in the playbook, but oh so effective. Nice completion there. Keeps the sticks moving. Now a first down carry for Harris. And hard running's going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. But no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Here's second and three. Pickett will look to throw it here. A short one there to Fryer. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. That coach is always hard on the quarterback reading the defense and getting it to the open man. That's good recognition there. And how about what he did after the catch? Yeah, hit your tight end, let him get some rack. Yeah, when he, when he gets moving, not many guys want to come over and put a head on him, do they? They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Second and six. Pick it. That'll be taken in there by Miles Borkin. And he's going to be taken down with the first down at the Ravens' 30. That one good for 14 yards and a Steeler first. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're whirled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Off play action. Pick it. He's got this to Pickens. And he's down inside the five with the four before he's out of bounds. A very solid gain of 27. Just picking up yardage in bunches here these last few plays. They have moved right down the field. And just like that, they're going to be set up with a first and goal. Harris. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Uh, he lost six there on the first down play. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Now here's another carry for Harris. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the ten down to the six. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. Now pick it. And that would not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter play. So with a fourth and goal looming, we hit the end of three quarters of play. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Pittsburgh. It's Steeler football, and they have the lead as well as we begin quarter number four. Boswell's kick is good, and that will extend their lead even further. So that CD, an important one here in the fourth quarter. And that importance could not be overstated. All eyes on both sidelines were staring that one down all the way. The significance is that they made it a two-score game. Still lots of time left to go, but likely that was their goal at the start of the drive. Get three points, make it a two-score game, and they were able to get it done. Successful field goal try. Here's Boswell to send it away. And a decent return out to the 27-yard line. And the offense for the Ravens returns to the field. 
And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we were talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right, keeping hope alive. Throwing now, Jackson on first down. Looking for Bateman, he's got him complete. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Those short little routes probably going to be open. The defense, they'll let those happen, especially when they can make an inbounds tackle. Yeah, where's Coach Madden when you need him? He always talked about taking what the defense gives you, but sometimes you have to know when you have to take more. That was one of those situations. Shoves him aside. A swing pass here to Edwards. Yeah, he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Two yards on the pickup there. And now two yards to go on third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. When you're leading in the final quarter, your radar has to be up for any potential deep shots. And probably not the last one they're going to see in this game, not as long as they hold this lead. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They'll run for it. It's Edwards. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Well, partner, I know this type of running back. I mean, this size, this intensity usually gets better as the game goes on. I just tell you from experience, the first few quarters, oh, you're eager. You come running up there. I'm going to tackle this guy. By the fourth quarter, you're coming up and thinking about it. And D-line wearing down fourth quarter. Yeah, that's not a guy they want to see consistently. My first thought is surprise because that's one of the better tight ends around, and I've seen him pull in balls like this before. But how about a little credit to the defense forcing that incompletion? They'll try again here, second and ten. Again on second and ten, it's Jackson. Throw right side here, taken in by Bateman. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Barney, you know when we call a game, we talk about Lamar Jackson and his speed and his elusiveness and the ability to get him on the ground, how tough that is for a defense. But how about his development as a thrower, as a professional? Now Jackson on first down. He'll go underneath, dropping it off to Edwards. And he'll wind up picking up about four, as that is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Jackson. Incomplete. Now the focus is really clear. They need to get that first down and either get out of bounds or maybe use one of those timeouts. Well, the noise got to be an issue now offensively. Here's third and six. Here's Jackson. That is caught. They'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. Clock management definitely critical here if they want to get back in this game. Absolutely agreed. They have to up the tempo in this case, down a couple of scores. Want to make sure they have a chance to win this ball game. All three timeouts remain, but they've got to score quick. It's first and 10. Jackson to throw. This is caught, and in for the Ravens touchdown. Lamar Jackson hooking up with Mark Andrews, and the Ravens have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, but if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively, though, you're probably hoping for a one-to-five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right, and if you have that one-to-five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope. When they had to slog their way downfield, they got the touchdown, but it's almost like 
Ah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it doesn't you guys, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Austin elects to bring this out of the end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Well, they can smell victory, partner. They can see it on the horizon, but certainly we're not done yet. Your defense still has three timeouts, and obviously this is a very slim lead they're holding on to. And let's face it, the easiest way to get this done, challenge your ground game, challenge your offensive line, your tight ends, your receivers. Anyone who's going to lay down a block, don't let there be penetration because they're going to stack the line of scrimmage and maybe bring extra people to the ball. If you can do that, make them burn their timeouts, run out the clock, life will be good. But if you really want to gamble a little bit, a quick play action, quick throw, might be able to get it done. Just make sure it's not incomplete and stop the clock. Another yard would probably put this thing in the books. It's second and one. Another run on second down. Try to cover up. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they'll get it with just over 90 seconds to go in the ball game. They need two. Here's third down. Pick it to throw. And the throw there going to be incomplete. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage. And just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. The Steelers send out their punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. A big kick that time, 52 yards. And they will take over first and 10. Jackson and the Ravens, here they come. Down 10-7, 80 seconds remaining. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. Throwing, Jackson. Well, he'll be marked down at the 26 with a gain of seven. I got the sense that the defense created a little momentum for him there, didn't it? Did their job, forced the punt. Now, nice start to the drive. Offense has to do their part. Yeah, they certainly do, but what a great start for them. They got to go thank the guys on D. Here's second down and three. Now Jackson. Oh, and that nearly ended it. That should have been intercepted, but he cannot corral it, and that is a lifeline there with third down coming up. Well, these corners, I tell you, they've done excellent work all game long. They remind me of guys in the past who just said, hey, throw it out here a hundred times, nothing good is going to happen. And if you throw it in the wrong place, I'll take it the other way. Pass complete to Edwards, and he's going to be a yard short. A two-yard pickup leads to fourth and one. Sometimes it's hard to figure, but you can live with incompletions in this situation. You can't live with these short gains that take time off the clock. You know who loves it, this defense. Here we go. This is fourth down. Here we go. It's Jackson on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And the Steelers, they're going to take over an excellent field position. And the knee is taken for the Steelers out of the victory formation. 
Ravens going to use their third and final timeout as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. Pick it down to a knee, and that is going to do it. I don't know about you, partner, but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off, I feel like I'm going to be sore tomorrow. This was one bruising affair. Low scoring, but my kind of football. Not a work of art, but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeroes. Well, you really can't ask for much more than what we just had here. Not only a close game that went down to the wire, Charles, but a clean one, too. No turnovers in this contest. And I think you're exactly right about that. To me, this is just a pair of offenses trying to find the slightest bit of separation from each other. And they were both hoping that the other side would make the big mistake first. But today, neither side made that mistake. And what we got, a very entertaining game throughout. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hard-working men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon